Whitebrook 85, yeah, back in the car again. And it's October 1st, first week of October, first weekend. That means two things. PA deer season, as far as uh, bow season opens. And the other is, if you've been following along on the channel, yeah, it's Sheriff Jim's Shrimp Oil. So I'm headed up to Sheriff's uh, house now. I'm gonna be there for a little bit, then I'm gonna head up to the cabin for a whopping eight or nine days. Uh, not sure how many yet, but uh, I think I this video, we're gonna be breaking the video into two parts. The first part will be the shrimp oil and me up the cabin for a little bit, and then the next part, when it comes up, will be uh, the stand from Pete's uh, hunting stands, and he's gonna come in and put a put a nice blind, covered blind up for me. So uh, that is on tap for the next two videos. So I'm over here crossing over the Bay Bridge and uh, down into Annapolis, and then I'll be heading out to Breezewood and Altoona and Blair County to see the sheriff. them down in it should take much. So what was the election results last year? Um, you, you won by what? Well I, I ran on a pose. Oh on a pose. Yeah right. I ran okay. on a pose but I had but I had a good return. Um, Still had a very good return. So very, very blessed. Very, very blessed. The community treats me extremely well. So, and, and how long's the term run for? Four years? Four years. So okay. I'll do it again here in another, another three and a half years. I'll be at it again. Wish you, there was another way to get and keep the job. <laughs> if you're not ready to retire. Yeah, who knows? By then, knows? I mean, I would say at this point, still young enough and still eager enough. And, Still have the ambition, so as long as the good Lord and health keeps up, I would say I'm going to keep going. All right. Well, we're just about ready for the shrimp. It is close. You know, you know, you got a good cook going. Whenever you got to start taking some pieces out to make room, just so you can get enough shrimp in. There. Yep. That's for sure. Well, I'm sure the lemon, the lemon uh, flavor, the, the zest from that's already in there. It is. It is. I can. You can see they're they're hollowing out some, yep. so that's good. What time it is. It's time to put the last one in. Yeah, the, seems the little knife assistance one. Yep. Yeah, we'll do them. Yeah, go ahead and open them. I'll get these stirred in. Smells good. Yep. Uh -oh, you're leaking again. Well, I figured that was going to happen. Lisa will run away. I can wash it off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
before I start pulling it out of the cooker. Get all the way towards the out of the cooker, right? Just leaving out tuna now. That was a nice Halloween setup that they have right there, that's for sure. I want to thank Sheriff Jim for having me up for the boil. I appreciate it. I enjoyed myself. I uh, went back a couple times and filled up on a lot of shrimp, potatoes, carrots, uh, and they had some kibasi in there. I think he said beef, and uh, I think he said chicken, so chicken apple, which was very good. And I thought I felt, I thought I had one that had some cheese in it too. Uh, it's a very, very good boil. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Had a great time as always. And uh, guess what? Looking forward to seeing Jim in a few weeks because he's going to be down there with us uh, in North Carolina. So you'll be seeing Sheriff Jim again. So now it's time to get up to the cabin. I got about a. Uh, I don't know, two and a half hour drive. Says I'll be there about 7.15. We'll see how the weather holds up. And uh, we'll get up there. I'll listen to some ball games on the way. just arrived at the cabin about 20 25 minutes ago it's now about 7 30 ish and uh, I, again I appreciate uh, the hospitality from Sheriff Jim and his friends there and again I, I didn't get his friends in the video just because uh, I, I didn't want to invade anyone's privacy so if you're kind of wondering about that that's why I, I kind of you know let that go as far as showing everybody there we all had a great time and the food was fantastic had a little trouble with that cooker getting it started uh had a mud wasp uh actually build a little nest in the gas line and it and it uh, jammed it up so uh it, it took a little bit to get that going but once it did turned out some great food and speaking of food i think i'm gonna hit some soup now and uh watch a little tv and turn in and uh, we'll get up for some bacon and eggs tomorrow. So, uh, night one here, uh, Saturday night. Get a beer, soup, and uh, we got about 58 in the cabin. And let's take a look. Yeah, we got the we got the heater glowing over there. We need that to, just to get the chill off. So here we are, Sunday morning for a little Sunday morning breakfast. Uh, I'm cooking up a pound of bacon here, so it'll be ready for the, for the week. I'll just have to heat it up when I want it in the morning. But uh, nice bacon and eggs this morning. Sounds sounds like a, a good thing to do. And just got to kind of see what happens today. Uh, weather, maybe rain, shower, 50% chance. Uh, again, some of the leftovers from uh, Hurricane Ian. And uh, for those that uh, in Florida and South Carolina and other parts of the country that were really, really, really affected by that, uh, you know, our, our hearts go out to you. We're thinking about you. And, uh, you know, we, we really care that, that, that you're okay. And that's, that's for sure. And, you know, I, I, normally I would make a joke about the rain or something like that, but I can't this time because uh, it was too serious and too deadly for, for too many people. We'll just get into this breakfast and uh, have a little bit and I'm probably going to sort of use this time to kind of prepare the cabin for deer season, go through everything, do a nice clean out of everything, see what we have, see what we don't have, straighten some things up. I'll probably just spend the time doing that and just a whole lot of nothing, which is fine. Uh, I have a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of nothing, which is, which is good. Bacon and eggs, coffee, of course, and, uh, We'll see. Well, I can hear the, the dozer up here, or the skitter. So I'm going to go up, check with the log guy. And uh, you've noticed I said most of the time log guy. 
And this is a this is a single man crew doing this. So oh, that's one of the reasons why it's taking so long, and then some equipment problems. Talked to the logger, and he is just about done. He had one more equipment failure. His uh, winch to pull the logs out broke, so he had somebody up that just fixed it. And uh, he's going to be around for a few days. He'll probably be around the cabin cutting a couple of those trees also. So he is just about done, and he showed me some of the, the trails on his phone. He has an app that he uh, he used, and um, you know, I'll be kind of doing the same thing, I think, with all trails and walking around and seeing where everything goes. I uh, want to let this ground dry out for a day or so, so it'll probably be tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be sunny or partly sunny tomorrow. So that is it. I'm going to take a take a walk back through our piece and, uh, and get back to the cabin. This is actually not our property. I'm just on the trail that's kind of taking a shortcut. I think if you can see the blue marks right up there about 30 yards, that's, uh, that's the start of our property over there. So just kind of just taking a little bit of a shortcut here. I hope they don't mind. Yeah, a nice mushroom. That kind of reminded me of the old uh, Super Mario Brothers. And I thought I was the only Goomba up here. Oh, I'm going to have to be on the lookout. There's the sun. It's kind of like partly cloudy or mostly cloudy actually. But I still think we're getting a little bit on the solar here. But uh, you can see it's opened up a lot more than it was. You can see way across to the field on the other side. Kind of down this end of the deck here. You can even see more. I don't know if there's, he's going to take any more of the, that one big tree out, that one kind of right there. I don't know if he's going to take that one out or not. But he said he is close. And uh, I think he's going to come by, take a couple of these out for us. So that'll be good. And then again, this big white oak right here that has to go. And uh, I mean, it's a nice tree, but... Um, with that damage to it, it's just a, just a bit of a risk for it to come down on the cabin. Now, I want to go down. I could have sworn the last time I was here, now this tree right here, which is a really nice oak, that senior and I purposely left on the field. That's why the field kind of goes down and then goes back around that. We told the guy when he was clear to leave that one because it was such a nice oak. And I thought I saw acorns on that last time I was here. So I'll take a take a peek down there and see if anything is dropping off of that one. Well, yeah, it does have some acorns on it, which is good to see because of the gypsy moths. And uh, here's one, and then I'm seeing a there's actually a lot of tops on the ground here. So they've already come through and uh, started getting these. Just happened to miss this one. I'll leave that one right there for it. I don't think it's going to care I touched it. You know, I'll walk down here a little bit more and see how this, is, this field is doing. Yeah, I see a few more tops walking down here, so they're definitely hitting some, uh, some acorns that are coming out of there. Really, at this point, it's kind of just an open area in the woods with, with a little bit of clover in it and a lot of weeds. Talked to a few people about it and given me some great ideas on what to do. Uh, but as I said, that's going to have to wait till till next year or so. Uh, so we get in here and cut all this, uh, this stuff down and maybe come through and put some weed killer on it a couple times and then come through and plant it again with the, with the no-till stuff. No. But it'd be nice if I had a little bit of help from the guys with that. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Well, I do have that camera on the tree over there. And uh, I think I'm going to move that down to the area that I, I think I'm going to put the blind at. Not going to be that far from the cabin, but uh, that's one of the spots that when we're here, we always see deer walking on that shelf, that first shelf down there. Oh, hopefully uh, that will be a good spot and I'll be hidden in there and scent won't be blowing all over the place. This is what I thought I was seeing from the... The deck the other time I was up, you can see what a this is a nice cluster of acorns right here. That's four, seven acorns on this little just this little cluster, and there were still two on it. And I'll uh, just leave these here. 
and uh, let the deer get them. I know they're coming in for these. Nice to see at least the gypsy moss didn't destroy every oak tree up here, thank goodness. And hopefully they'll be starting to taper down for the next however many years. Hopefully, hopefully. So here we are Sunday afternoon and it's chicken wing Sunday. Look at this. Is this enough for one person? Eh, I think so. I think it might be. And some lunches, some snacks. So I got a lot of wings here. I'm gonna do some of Old Bay garlic butter type sauce. Uh, some of the other ones are gonna get some, uh, I'll have it out here, but they're gonna get some Carolina gold on them. Uh, I'm gonna put a little Himalayan pink salt, black pepper, and garlic on them first as they're frying up over here. So uh, I think it's time. It's 4.30 Sunday afternoon. It'll take me about 45 minutes to cook up these wings or more. So uh, let's get some wings going. That'll be a good afternoon and have a nice beer as I'm cooking these up. We'll show you that in a minute too. So I guess I gotta get this bag open. Of course, wind is blowing this way, right in my face as always. Or maybe it's swirling now, it's going that way. Uh, getting this heated up here. About ready to get flipped, put some sauce on them first. There we got the Old Bay garlic powder and butter. Put some of those on these. And then we got the uh, Carolina Gold. I'll go on these others over here on this side. This will be good. And here they are cooking up. That wind, of course, wrong way. Well, I arrived back, and uh, we'll take a look at the all trails in a little bit. I'll I'll put some pictures up and narrate over the top of it. But I am back. I'm going to put my feet up here, take my boots off, gra grab a propel or something like that, some uh, drink. And uh, maybe have some of those uh, leftover chicken wings from last night. They were really good. Kind of apologize for just uh, fading off into the distance last night, but uh, had the wings and just kind of sat back and had a little fire and just kind of just kicked back and uh, watched Unbroken, uh, the movie. And, uh, and it was quite uh, an inspiring film to see what uh, he went through and Louie went through and then kind of made it out and uh, didn't carry any remorse with him, which I think uh, people aren't doing these days. People all want vengeance. And uh, he didn't want that, which was was just good to see. So it was based off a true story, again, unbroken. We're going on about quarter of seven uh, this evening. And I uh, decided to go ahead and fire the wood stove up. It's about 48 degrees out. Hey, my beer this, this evening, this is something from Iron Pint Brewery uh, in Altoona. Uh, it's their lager. And uh, they kind of worked with uh, Sheriff Jim to create a label for it. For the Pennsylvania Sheriff's Conference, their after party kind of thing, and it, uh, it has a nice uh, a logo on here. Here, take a look close up, as you can see. And again, this was for their after party, so now they're not having their conference and drinking beer at the same time. And there was a limited amount, and as a matter of fact, that brewery was sold, so this is kind of a last of it. Yeah, nice, nice uh, lager. A little bit, a little bit different of a taste from from what I'm used to, as far as lager wise. But good. It's got some good notes in there, and uh, I'm going to enjoy that. Have uh, one more bottle of it, and probably uh, rinse it out and put the cap back on and put it up over here on the shelf of honor after a little bit. Well, that movie last time, uh, I don't know how you did it. One frame of a train wreck. And yes, that was two mules for Sister Sarah, Clint Eastwood and Shirley MacLaine. And again, it was a little bit different of a movie for Clint Eastwood. It was really those two were the really main focus of the whole movie. Uh, you know, every once in a while there'd be a, a few per different people in there, but uh, for the most part, it was just their interaction. And it was uh, it was very good. You don't think of Shirley MacLaine as like a Western person, but she did a, did a good job at it. 
So uh, two mules for Sister Sarah, for those that got it, uh, great job. Uh, I think I'm going to sit back watch another Clint Eastwood tonight. Maybe I don't want to say what it is because maybe it could be one of those future ones, but I have a feeling you're going to get it. My mystery movie for tomorrow is going to be tomorrow night. And this one I think might be the toughest that I've that I'm going to give you. Maybe. Eh, for the Hey, again, I always think it is and then you, you just, you guys are just like, wow, I, I don't know how you do it, but you do it. So I'm going to kick back here with the, uh, the logger, the iron pipe logger that uh, Sheriff Jim was kind enough to pass on. Limited, limited edition. And it certainly is. It's almost like a lemony note in there. I'm not sure what that is. You know, I'll figure it out by the time I get to the bottom of it. But again, uh, thanks, uh, thanks Sheriff. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, kick back. Little soup, little movie, and uh, yeah, nice wood stove. Keep me warm in here, so we'll catch you in the morning. Yeah, I think I, I think I left you in this chair last night, and I'm, I'm greeting you in it this morning. Yeah, we got some uh, remnants of uh, Hurricane Ian. Tropical storm or depression Ian over top of us right now. I don't even think it's a tropical storm at this point, but uh, Some rain bands from that made its way all the way up. It's more centered over kind of the Philly area uh, Than it is this way, but there's some bands Shooting up this way as you can see we got some rain coming down Rain on the deck the Cherokee out there washing it up a little bit but just had a nice breakfast of uh, two eggs some bacon Short stack of pancakes that uh, tasted really good. With talking to the logger, I do know the area that he's not going to run over with the uh, dozer anymore. And uh, I may go ahead and plant some seed on there uh, when I bring the blind in in part two of this video. Uh, we may run over it, but I think it'll be okay because it, uh, it's probably not even going to be germinated yet. And it's only going to be a four-wheeler and a trailer, so I, I don't think it's it's not going to be that heavy tracks of a, uh, uh, a machine that's going to really rip things up. If anything, it's just going to push the seed into the soil a little bit better and, and make some better contact. So I think I'll get, go ahead and get that in at some point, maybe this afternoon. I'm not sure, depending on what this rain does today. They're saying like kind of mostly cloudy. And then we have some nice days coming up, uh, even like 67 and 70 and... So the, hoping that this is it for the rain for the for the trip, but we'll see because uh, that storm has just been kind of lingering around the East Coast or Upper East Coast now for about three, four, five days. But for now, just have a little bit of coffee, kind of wait the rain out, maybe make a call or two or whatever, and uh, uh, we'll see if I'm going to go ahead and put that seed down later. Yeah, I'd like to do it, and we'll see how much rain we're getting and if it's too sloppy, whatever. But it would be nice to get it down now. The soil's damp. And uh, who knows? Who knows? I might come back and there could be something. Or nothing. So we'll see. Well, been raining all day, which is not what I thought was going to happen. And forecast wise, etc. So I'm coming down here to the, uh, the old solar panel. And. Uh, just go ahead and grab the old uh, wind, windshield uh, washer. And uh, since we had all that rain on there, it's a good time I can get this, uh, get this nice and clean here. It's one good thing about having it uh, leveled at a ground like this, or within arm's reach, I guess I should say. Now, do I know if this is going to stay like this? Probably not. Not much going on today, but uh, the the featured subscriber of the week, and, and you've seen him before, Joe the Farmer. And here's Joe. And uh, I'll tell you what, he put a monster deer down in Kentucky at the beginning of September. So if you're interested, it's a 189, and that would be wet uh, as far as the antlers goes. 189 score uh, still has to dry for the the required i forget what it is 90 or 180 days something like that uh, before it can be officially scored but it was a monster joe's got a nice video uh here it is right over here you want to take a look 
And again, congrats to Joe. Joe got that through the outfitter uh, that's uh, connected with Buck Bourbon. If you're familiar with the Buck Bourbon products that you've seen in the stores, uh, uh, that was on, I think, his outfitters, George's outfitters. And congrats, Joe. Uh, I know you've been after that deer for a while now, and you finally got him. Again, congrats. After dinner, uh, had some, uh, just some tuna tonight. I, I've been keeping it pretty simple this first part of this trip uh, with the food for a couple reasons. One, there's no no real reason to go big every day because uh, that's kind of what I got into before and uh, was getting, I was just putting on too much weight. So I had to cut back a little bit and, and this is helping. Uh, just kind of keeping it simple. And then towards the end of the week, uh, Maybe I'll kick it up a bit when uh, the stand gets here. Um, actually, I just came out because I thought it wasn't raining, but it, I can feel that it is. Just a little bit, uh, a little bit after dinner, probably. I mean, it's like 45 out here, but really not a not a bad 45. Not uh, not freezing, but uh, certainly not nice enough to sit out here and do anything. I'd get cold quick. I know that. Uh, I've had the the wood stove has been going this afternoon and it's been nice just keeping like one, one and a half logs in there at the most, kind of keeping it a nice 70 ish in the cabin or so. So I, I'm just, just going to kick back again tonight, this evening, see what happens. Tomorrow's supposed to be, I think, at least partly sunny and then sunny days after that. So I'm probably going to wait the morning out and, uh, and then go down in the afternoon and maybe throw some seed down tomorrow. Uh, we'll see what I'm going to end up doing in the morning. I might check the two game cams. I know for one thing that I need to bring a cloth by and clean the lens because you get the spiders and bugs and rain and dirt on them and everything like that. So the lenses, I think, could use a cleaning on the two cameras here. So uh, I'll tell you what, here's a, here's a movie. And as I mentioned, this might be my most difficult yet. And if you, you know, if you just grab this on the first try I, I, I don't know what i'm gonna do but uh but here it is so i'll give you one clue uh, there was a remake of this movie so that's your that's your one clue and uh we'll see how you do and okay you do great what can i say so well i'm gonna go back in just uh, kick back for a little bit i haven't had a beer or anything yet today and uh just wait a little bit and maybe start watching a little tv about 6:37. There also, there is a uh, ham radio net, uh, as I've mentioned before. That's when a group of people get together uh, to practice their radio skills and, and test the repeater, the, the machine that s receives the signal and then sends it back out again so everybody can hear it. So that's what's on tap for this evening. And uh, hey, like yesterday, I'll catch you in the morning and it will be, uh, what's tomorrow? Wednesday. So it'll be Wednesday morning tomorrow. I enjoyed that movie last night. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough one for you. Uh, just think a little bit back, uh, a little farther. I don't want to give the date out for the, the year out for it, but uh, uh, that hint with the uh, that there was a remake of it, uh, that may help. We have something to go up there on the, uh, the Blue Pot Cafe this morning. Uh, so I'm waiting for things to dry out a little bit. But uh, this is something that I, I sent away uh, let me get it real close up here. This is a uh, the cross swords from Gettysburg. This is pewter. I'm going to go ahead and put this up in the Blue Pot Cafe again to honor our veterans. And this one hits close to home for my wife's side of the family. Now, my side of the family didn't come into this 1890s. Uh, they came to America from Italy. And my wife's family was here for a pretty long time, actually both sides, her mom and dad were here for a pretty long time. Uh, and Sean's great, great, great grandfather uh, fought for Pennsylvania. Uh, he was a Philly a guy and he fought for the, the, I don't know what regiment in Pennsylvania. And his great, great uh, grandfather uh, was a drummer boy, I think either in the first or second Delaware regiment. And uh, great great uncle actually died at Gettysburg, uh, I think the third day, uh, I think during Pickett's charge, if I remember correctly. And this is going to go up for, for him 
and his uncle or great 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 uncle or great great uncle is buried out in Gettysburg. This goes out to, to all of them and uh, that side of the family did have uh, people that fought for the South uh, in the Civil War. And I'm not going to get into any of that. I think that they were doing what they thought was right at the time. Uh, I don't want to try to put today's logic into somebody that lived over 100 years ago or 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago. And that's what people are trying to do, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, that they were brave soldiers. They fought for a cause that they thought was right. We know it wasn't, but uh, so this, is, this goes for them. Uh, soldiers of the Civil War, and I've, I've studied and read a lot about the Civil War, and those men were some of the bravest men I, that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, they, they just were relentless. So uh, this goes out to them, and let's put this up on the, on the wall in there. And there it is up there with the others. Again, next to the one from my dad, uh, 13th Armored. World War II and senior, 1970 Vietnam, and the rest honoring those that fought Korea. I think that was Desert Storm, and our MIA POWs, 8th Air Force, of course. So, yeah, the, the blue pot, and uh, again, I'll continue to bring it up, and uh, we'll keep put adding pins there, that's for sure. Now well, it's nice enough, I think I'll go ahead and spread some seed down there. And uh, I pulled my game camera from the field over here, and I'm going to put it down near the stand, just so I can kind of keep an eye on the stand itself once it's up, and uh, some of the grass that I'm going to plant around it. Here are some of the Domain Green Machine and or food plot seed. No. Quick stand, no till. Now, I'm not sure whether this is going to work, as I mentioned. I still figure it's worth a try. I know it's a little bit late. Uh, this probably should have been done the last trip, right at the uh, beginning of September. I, th I have a feeling it would probably be six inches high by now, at least, not more. But uh, the time wasn't right, and uh, yeah, it's about as right as it can be now, because uh, if it was any later than this, I probably wouldn't do it. Oh, I got a friend with me today. This is, uh, I think, the Logger's Mechanics dog that decided to follow me down here. I don't know what kind of dog that is, but uh, he's pretty nice. I kind of like that dog. Nice color. Looks like a some type of pointer, I thought, because I saw, I thought I saw him in the stance. You know, he's wandering all over chasing deer, <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, I can't see him moving in there. I'll tell you, when you see that white wood, does that give you? Just so give you a heads up. Here's the lane. I think I'll just go ahead and put some seed down here. It's pretty flat. Spin around to this side. It kind of dead ends right there. It would have been nice if he would have gone another 50 yards in there or so, but uh, I'm not going to ask him to do that. And uh, right down ahead here, uh, I'll probably have to clear some type of lane out there eventually. I might get down and do a few this time. All right, let's get going here. Stop stalling. I'm stalling, I think. Cutting those that trail a little bit or shooting lane. I'll tell you with a handsaw, boy. Whoo! I forgot to bring some snacks with me, too. I'm not that far from the cabin. It's not a big deal. But uh, probably could have used something. Here we are looking down that way. I don't know if you can tell a difference. But uh, I did cut a lot of stuff down in there. Mostly beach. Or all beach, as a matter of fact. Through there. So this will be looking down and also right along that area. That's the second middle logging road. So we may get some deer walking between the roads also, which is uh, which you get, especially when the hunting season comes on. They don't want to walk the road. They walk through the woods. So I'm going to go ahead and do this area behind me. And it looks pretty shady. Uh, so I'm probably just going to use a little bit of that uh, all green or that one that's got the peas in it and mostly the other seed, which is, I bet you that's, I didn't look at the bag, but it's probably a lot of rye.
I'm done. You can see my buddy still with me. Uh, I've been cutting some of the stuff that's been over the trail, uh, especially closer to where the stand is, but I'm going to leave this right here. This, this guy, I don't know if you can see because of the shadow, but that and this, uh, just in case a buck wants to make a scrape over here. And that would be nice, a yeah, 50 yard shot, 45 yard shot. And uh, I think I'm gonna leave these couple right over here too. Uh, just in case, you never know what you'll find when we come back in, in a couple weeks or three weeks or a month or whatever. Well, I've got that seeded all the way down to where the orange marks on the trees are. Nice to have a little company with the dog. I hope his owner isn't uh, worried about him. I don't think he is. He has one of those tracking collars on him from what it looks like. Oh, pretty nice out here this afternoon. Uh, it's like 65 degrees, but uh, kind of a warmish 65. And uh, I figured I'd come out here and uh, the honor of uh, finishing Deadwood tonight. I have the movie with me. I watched a few of the other other episodes of season three at home and finished it up and I'll top it off with the movie tonight. So uh, we'll have the Deadwood cigar. I think I have the leather rose with me and a little afternoon coffee here. That's, that's pretty good. So uh, just going to kick back here on the deck this afternoon. Uh, a light, again, another light dinner kind of that uh, that easy to prepare, uh, no no worry about uh, fuss um, dinner. I know it's a little bit uh, off my style as far as meals go. Really just kind of trying to lose a little bit of weight instead of eating heavy uh, every day uh, while I'm here. So, uh, cause that really, that'll that'll do it to me. And like I said, I, I want to try to lose a little bit. Uh, I get down to a more reasonable level for myself, which I, I'm getting there, but uh, it's, it's a battle. So I enjoyed Deadwood. Uh, have, uh, you know, it took a while for me to get used to, the, again, the language of how they use. And uh, it's a little uh, true to form. Uh, and even the set, I think, is true to form with the close proximity of, uh, with the close proximity of everything. Uh, as far as like across the street, the street really isn't that wide and very muddy and sloppy and dirty. Uh, the way it, it would have been with just a just a dirt road through the middle of town with everybody doing everything on it. So uh, I enjoyed it. It had a good theme. I think uh, I think George Hurst got a little bit of a bum rap with uh, with Deadwood. I kind of looked him up, and uh, he wasn't quite the scoundrel uh, that they portrayed there. But uh, hey, look, you know it's it's a TV show. They had to make something a little bit interesting. And I think, wasn't uh, Patty Hearst to his great-great-granddaughter or something like that? Now, she was a rebel in her time. You may call me Tanya. Uh, and she tried to rob that bank with the, I think she had an AK-47 or something like that. So, uh, But really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters. And uh, uh, I don't really have a favorite character. I guess Al, Al might, be, uh, might be my guy because he was, you know, he's on top of his game, that guy. So... I enjoyed it. Uh, I agree with everybody who said it was a good uh, good flick and uh, looking forward to the wire coming up in in hunting season. So uh, I'll go ahead and start that off and something tells me that's going to take me a long time to finish, that's for sure. So uh, again, nice afternoon here on the deck, nice cigar and uh, if anything comes up I'll, I'll bust in but if not I'll catch you in the morning.
just stopped over here in Mansfield. Gonna pick up some food for Saturday when Pete and his son from Big M Hunting Stands comes up to set the blind up. So I'm going to look for some good steaks in here. And uh, right across the street, we got a Pudgies. I think I'll fill up on gas and then uh, hit their beer cave and see if there's anything interesting in there. So let me so see if I can find either maybe a nice, I'm not sure if they have tomahawks in here, or maybe some cowboy steaks, some ribeyes, some potatoes, or whatever we'll find. So I'll go in and, and check some things out. Well, got back from Mansfield with some good steaks, potatoes, green beans, onion for Saturday, Saturday afternoon's dinner with uh, Pete and his son when they put the blind in. So that will be part two of this video. Uh, this afternoon came back, uh, put some other things away that I had bought and uh, took a nice shower this afternoon. And boy, did that feel good. One of these times, I'm going to have to pick up one of those uh, shower units that uh, you connect to the gas and you put the uh, the one end into your your water supply and it has a pump and everything. It pumps the water up and it heats the, heats the water up to, I don't know, 110, 120 degrees, whatever you want. And uh, you can take a nice shower that way without doing the, putting the bag out here on the deck for a while. I also boiled some water and and put it in there and uh, kind of kicked it off the rest of the way so I wouldn't have to wait quite as long. And that worked out and it was fine. Tonight is uh, Taco Thursday. Gonna uh, have some of the leftover canned chicken from last night. I had some basically a, a kicked up chicken soup or ramen chicken soup last night. One of those big big bowls that I put some extra chicken in and I put some onions and and celery in and uh, kicked it up a little bit and uh, had that last night uh, that, again that was that was pretty pretty good I'll use the rest of that uh, chicken again that was chicken that uh, Mrs. Rook canned up and uh, I got some taco seasoning I'll heat that up get the tacos ready and uh, cheese and sour cream and maybe an avocado and the chicken and uh, that's gonna be pretty good I'll probably gonna kick that off pretty soon and a little bit of uh, High West bourbon that I'm going to have also this evening. And again, as I finished up uh, Deadwood last night uh, with the movie itself, and I hadn't realized that actually the series was canceled, and that's why it kind of left it the way it was after season three, and uh, then they kind of picked it back up with the movie. I know everybody aged pretty good in that movie, and I don't really think the actors aged as much as it looks like, but I, think, I guess they were just doing a little bit of... Uh, homage maybe to the director who's, uh, who's struggling a little bit and has gotten a bit older and uh, maybe they were kind of keeping him in mind. Uh, I watched a little bit of the special ending piece, the separate piece and uh, it, I don't think it, it said that directly but I think it kind of hinted at it a little bit uh, and enjoyed that. It kind of wrapped things up and I know they took a few liberties of, uh, of Al uh, at the end and uh, Charlie Utter and for those of you who didn't see it I don't want to on a wreck it but uh, but uh, I think they kind of wrapped it up pretty nicely it will go down as one of the ones I really enjoyed and something that I think I'll probably wait a year or so and then and then check it again and maybe a little bit more in the, the binge style and I'll kind of do one after the other after the other after the other and, and I think I'll enjoy it and I, I think I'll probably get a lot out of it because I think as you go along, sometimes you watch it the second and third time, you pick up things. So uh, that'll be enjoyable in the future. So tacos, a little bit of High West bourbon. Did I say High West? High West. A little High West bourbon. And uh, that'll be on tap. And uh, I'll tell you what, let me wrap this video up. Uh, it was a good, uh, what, was I, what did I get here, Saturday? Saturday to Thursday. It's been good. Got a lot done so far. 
uh, over here with the trees that have got cleared away from the cabin. And uh, there's some firewood over there for us if we get adventurous enough to get a chainsaw over and, and cut some of that wood. There's a nice one of those trees he couldn't use and it's laying right over here so uh, that is definitely one that uh, can be used for firewood if the guys are uh, so moved. I mean it couldn't be easier. It's close to the cabin. Cut right here. Stack right over there. So that's going to be that'll be good. I'll go ahead and end this and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow with part two and then go into uh, with Pete coming up and setting the blind up and we'll see how that is and then uh, we'll see when I want to go home to also whether it's going to be Sunday morning or maybe if I have some camoing to do it might be uh, it might be Monday morning instead I might spend Sunday doing a little camo on the blind. So this is White Rook 85 everybody have a good one and uh, stay tuned for part two.